This evening we're bringing you a special programme about some of our artists who live in various rather picturesque parts of the country. We're in Greenore in County Louth where a Japanese printmaker has made her home. First though we're off to the Kingdom. Now County Kerry has a wealth of all kinds of artists, be they writers, poets and craftspeople. And Kilcommon near Killarney is no exception. That's where an artist with a very historic name, that of Terence McSweeney, has been developing his glass blowing business since 1998. And Maria Malarkey brings us now the story of the success of his craft business. Glass is one of the oldest forms of art, dating back to about three and a half thousand years ago. Throughout this long history of glass blowing, skilled craftspeople have endured the tremendous heat to coax beautiful forms from the fire using nothing more than their breath and a few simple tools. Terence McSweeney has been glass blowing for over 30 years, drawing inspiration from the natural beauty around him to create handcrafted pieces of glass. You obviously you have to have a flair for glass making. It's very intense work very hot, uh, can be very frustrating. You can have spent 20 minutes, half an hour on a piece of glass and the next thing something goes wrong with it and all that work is down the drain. So that can be very, very annoying. But to see something, when you make something and you wait when you put it into the oven and you're waiting to see what it's like the following morning and when it comes out and it looks well, that's really a buzz. And it's developing new pieces rather than consistency turning out the same pieces all the time. That's what really you get the buzz new pieces, developing new pieces, different colours, different shapes, different ideas. My mother see an ad in a newspaper in 1979, a glassworks in Killarney were looking for a glass apprentice. I joined that company in February of that year. Uh, I gave six months in 1980 in the Isle of Wight, learning my trade. And there are six months, a couple of years later, in the uh, Langham Glass, which is Norfolk in England, developing the skills of the glass. Uh, and I always had a feel for anything to do with, with handwork anyway, be it carpentry, whatever. I was involved, I liked the, the, the skill of the act of handwork. Because the first thing you must learn with glasswork is to control the glass on your gadrian. Keep it centered, keep it, uh, your, your bubble, they call it, nice and even and, 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 and circled. Uh, control it on the bench, uh, the thickness of the glass on the base of the piece and the, the neck of the piece to have it controlled. So it's all a learning process. It takes years of experience. The company closed up in 96 and due to the, the skill of glass making and the rarity of it, there was, there was no where else to actually to go to find a job. So I decided to start up here ourselves in 98. We got help from the Tui area which was a local uh, government-based body here. They funded us and we started in October of 98. Myself and another guy with me and my wife, the three was basically involved in it. Since he opened his business in 1998, Terence uses only recycled clear glass, which he sources from his neighbours, and each piece is hand-moulded using recycled wet newspapers. When people come to the shop here, customers, and they see the glass, they're amazed that they, you can wind up with something so beautiful from some waste material. Uh, they be the glass shapes and sizes, they love it. Pieces are evolving all the time. You, like, you start with some piece, uh, you'll, you'll shape it, you'll put it in the kennel, it'll come out the following morning, and you'll look at it, and you'll say to yourself, can I develop this further? And something actually may go wrong with the piece, and it may, it may turn out quite, quite nice. That's the way, a lot of the ideas, and obviously you pick up ideas from magazines, you see something in woodwork, you can say, could I adapt this to glass, or slate, or you work with wrought iron and see, could you adapt it to glass. Glass is multifunctional, and there's no intention of what you can do with it. Uh, and people that have come to visit the workshop here, I, I live and blow a bit of glass, and when they're watching me in the start, they think it's very, very simple, very easy to make this thing. Just, I live and blow a little bubble. And they can't control it, it goes out, of, it collapses in them, that blows it too big, it gets too light. So it, it is very difficult to control the glass itself. And it's, that's experience. You build up experience over the years. The most enjoyable part of what I find in glass making is actually doing new pieces, uh, developing new pieces, 
developing new colours and see what reaction you get from people. Uh, the, when people come into you and see you glass making and when you're selling to people and get the, the wow factor and especially when they realise that it's made from basically waste material, that's a, a buzz. I've been glass making for over 30 years. When I look at my products now and what I produced 30 years ago, they're worlds apart. In the future, I hope to develop new ideas, bring in new technology and develop new pieces. I've been very fortunate to, to work with glass for the last 30 years. Obviously, I love my work and I hope that shows in the pieces that I produce. If I can stay involved in Glassworks for the next 30 years, I would be delighted. Great positive story there of a craft continuing to succeed despite the difficult economic times at present.